Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Sustain a What webisode series, the City of Cape Canaveral's monthly virtual public outreach program designed to educate and inform residents about all the latest happenings regarding our local environment, technology, and infrastructure. My name is Zach Eichholz, and I serve as the City's Sustainability Program Manager and Resilience Planner. I will be your host for today's webisode. Today, we will be looking at the growing trends, pun intended, of community gardening, urban agriculture, and the use of Florida native plants in landscape design. While the practice of gardening is considered ancient, it has recently seen an enormous uptick in popularity and urgency as many try to become more resourceful and resilient in the name of sustainability and healthy lifestyles, and due to the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. Modern industrialized agriculture also has a huge environmental impact, ranging from high emissions to resources use, that has moved many to go their own way and produce what they can at home or on a small community scale. Hopefully by the end of today's presentation, you can have a basic understanding of how to start a home garden, what plants to grow, and what to build to support your garden, and know what native plants are best to use in your landscaping. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's presentation. Let's talk about gardens and plants. Here is a brief overview of what we'll be discussing today. First, we'll review what is considered an urban garden. Then I'll show a series of examples of some local Brevard County-based community gardens, including Cape Canaveral's. Next, we'll show off some tried and tested open source plant bed designs that are available for you to use at home. Then I'll show off another great resource, the city's home gardening packet. And finally, we'll discuss the benefits of using Florida native plants in your landscaping. Urban gardening, and by extension, community gardening, has seen a resurgence as of late due to both a growing movement globally of adopting more sustainable practices and the COVID-19 pandemic. Urban gardening is defined as simply the practice of cultivating, processing, and distributing food in or around urban areas. Lockdowns and restrictions have forced many to move activities outdoors, leading to a wave of home improvement projects, many of which include home gardening. Food shortages throughout the pandemic have also led many to turn to home gardening as a means of providing food security. Due to the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 54 million people are believed to have experienced food insecurity in 2020 in the United States, including a potential 18 million children. Food insecurity is generally considered not being able to receive at least 1,000 calories on any given day. The projected number of people living in Brevard County that experienced food insecurity in 2020 was estimated at 18%, or about 103,000 people. And as said earlier, modern industrialized agriculture also has a huge environmental impact. Food accounts for over a quarter, or about 26%, of global greenhouse gas emissions. Half of the world's habitable land is used for agriculture. 70% of global freshwater withdrawals are used for agriculture. 78% of global ocean and freshwater eutrophication, or the pollution of waterways with nutrient-rich pollutants from things like fertilizers, is caused by agriculture. And 94% of mammal biomass, excluding humans, is livestock. This means livestock outweigh wild mammals by a factor of 15 to 1. So given these statistics, home and local gardening practices are very important to promote as they can ease the burden on the world's overall food production system, lower one's environmental footprint, and boost one's resilience, offering an affordable platform for obtaining healthy fruits and vegetables while also inspiring environmental stewardship. Besides all of this, urban and community gardens can also help improve air and soil quality, increase biodiversity of plants and animals, reduce food miles that are required to transport nutritious foods, and in the process reduce harmful emissions, can replace impervious structures and improve water infiltration, can reduce neighborhood waste through composting, and positively impact the urban microclimate by reducing the urban heat island effect. Also, gardening just seems to make people happy. So now let's look at some local examples of urban and community gardens in Brevard County. Please note that this list is not comprehensive and there are more community gardens in Brevard County than those found here. First, we'll start with Cape Canaveral's own community garden. Cape Canaveral's community garden was built in 2016 with funding being partially provided by a National Recreation and Park Association grant. Located on, on the north end of Patriots Park at 200 Long Point Road, 
The mission of this beautiful garden is to serve the community by providing an opportunity for gardeners of all experience and expertise to work, volunteer, and learn from one another while growing healthy fruits and vegetables. Even though it is small, the garden offers many amenities and opportunities for crops to flourish and grow sustainably. There are currently 12 beds, six on the north end and six on the south end. Each bed has a subterranean reclaim irrigation system that can be manually adjusted per bed by each gardener, as well as a 500 gallon tank designed to hold captured rainwater. The rainwater is collected on the roof of a 100 square foot pergola built over, over the top of the tank, channeled into a downspout and into the tank for storage. This addition has really saved a lot of water as when the tank is full, it can last for months on end. All crops in the garden are also organic. There is a compost tumbler, shade canopies, a storage cabinet for tools, a bee hotel, fencing, patches of Florida native plants, and even a little free library and pantry where community members can exchange books and non-perishable items. The growing season is considered, from, is considered to be from October 1st to September 30th each year. And beds are given out on a first come first serve basis. There is currently a waiting list. After five years of use, we are proud to say we have a very caring group of gardeners and we look forward to many more years of seeing this beautiful place bring joy to countless more community members. If you're interested in finding out more about the city's community garden, or if you want to be put on the waiting list for a bed, please visit the web address provided below in the video description. Now let's take a look at some of the sister gardens associated with Cape Canaveral's community garden. You may see some similar characteristics between each community garden over the next few slides, and that is not a coincidence. First up, we have the Ethos Community Garden at Florida Tech in Melbourne. The Ethos Community Garden was founded and built in 2017 and is intended to help students and staff on the Florida Tech campus learn about the practice of urban agriculture. It is an area of about 5,000 square feet and has over 30 plots, a compost tumbler, a rainwater catching pergola, 400 gallons worth of rain barrels, and a beautiful perimeter fence. The garden is managed by an on-campus student club and sometimes even provides fresh vegetables and herbs to Florida Tech's dining hall. The garden is also used during campus events, a great example being the annual Treat or Treat Halloween event where the garden is turned into a pumpkin patch for visitors. The garden's design process was student-led with assistance from the university's facilities department. Note, <clears throat> note the center pergola and or excuse me, note the center pergola and bed designs are identical to those found in Cape Canaveral's community garden, the plans of which were shared with the city to help improve its own garden, networking, and promote inter-county sustainability practices. Next is the Pathos Community Garden in the city of Cocoa Beach. The Pathos Community Garden was founded and built in 2018 with the assistance of the Cocoa Beach Sustainability Committee. The garden is located at Ramp Road Park behind the tennis courts and is currently made up of 14 four by eight raised garden beds. The Pathos Community Garden was built using the same design as the Florida Tech Ethos Community Garden. The two gardens, along with Satellite Beach's Logos Community Garden, which we'll see in a moment, and Cape Canaveral's, are all considered sister gardens due to their similarity in design and the collaborative efforts of Cocoa Beach, Florida Tech, Satellite Beach, and Cape Canaveral to bring sustainable gardening to the respective communities. Applications for available plots are accepted on an annual basis beginning in May, with plots being assigned by August. If there are no plots available at the time of application, applicants are placed on a waiting list and notified if the plots become available. Last among the sister gardens is Satellite Beach's Logos Community Garden, which was founded and built in 2017 and located at DeSoto Park. The garden consists of a total of 20 four by eight garden beds, each one being two feet deep. They are arranged from east to west in the shape of an S to represent the word sustainability. The garden also hosts 13 rain barrels that can cumulatively hold almost 800 gallons of rainwater that is collected from a nearby racquetball court's roofing gutter. In the garden's easternmost section is a shade house where plants are nursed and cultivated for not only the community garden, but also other planting projects around the city. At the garden's westernmost end, is also a bat house. Now let's move on to another great community garden that is based in Bavar County, the Wickham Park Community Garden in Melbourne. This community garden is run by the UF IFAS Bavar County Extension Office. 
UF IPIS stands for the University of Florida Institute of Food and Agricultural Sciences and is one of the premier global authorities on all things plants and farming. The city often consults, in fact, their assistance when it comes to landscape projects and the selection of plant species. The Wickham Park Community Garden has four by, four by 16 foot beds, has an annual growing season that runs from August to June, and in the off season is used as an educational site to help instruct prospective gardeners. Here we have the Collins Aerospace Community Garden in Melbourne. Collins Aerospace is a multinational corporation headquartered in Iowa, but they have a campus near the Melbourne airport. And on this campus, they have a working community garden for campus employees to run and maintain. Crops grown here go to Second Harvest Food Bank to feed homeless and vulnerable individuals. The Verde Eco School is a unique example on this list as this is not only a community garden, but as the name suggests, it is also an entire school built around a nature-based education program. This facility, which is located in Nogali, offers both outdoor and classroom-based learning environments that offer schooling for ages three to 16 years. Gardening and urban agriculture is a core teaching of the school, as well as ecosystem services and other more traditional subjects such as math, science, and language. The Blue Sky Community Garden is located in Suntree at the United Methodist Church on North Wickham Road. It was started in 2014 and measures 50 by 100 feet. It is operated by 6 to 10 volunteers every Saturday morning, weather permitting. The, the garden is organic and it produces up to 1,000 pounds of vegetables each year and in some years even more. Food that is harvested here goes to gardeners and to those in need around the area. The gardeners are seeking to expand the garden and require more volunteers. You can go to the garden's Facebook page to inquire about volunteering if you wish and offer your assistance. When starting your own urban garden, it is important to have the proper infrastructure in place to maximize success and efficiency, especially in Florida where soil, con where soil conditions are sometimes not, not the best. Having a dedicated garden bed or plot can help make a controlled and healthy growing environment for your fruits and vegetables, as well as help out your back. There are perhaps dozens of garden bed designs with many offering similar benefits. The bed design you, hear, you see here on this slide is the design the city uses, or at least a smaller version. This is a four by eight foot design that is two feet tall, made from, wooden, made from a wooden frame and corrugated metal paneling. They have an open bottom, can be built in modular sections for easy assembly by as little as one person. It costs about $100 to build with materials that, that can all be found at your local hardware store. They can, have, they can last with upkeep for about 10 years and can be moved around with two people when empty. Smaller versions can be built depending on your budget and space requirements, including 2x4, 2x6, 1x4, and 4x4 foot variants. Cape Canaveral uses a two by six foot version due to its garden's small size. The post in the middle is optional, but it can be a good space, div space divide if you want more than one crop in your bed, or if another person is sharing your bed. Plans for these beds and their four by eight, in their four by eight foot form are available in the video description below. So please check those out. On this slide are plans for the pergola design that was used at the Ethos Community Garden and at Cape Canaveral's Community Garden. This pergola takes up an area of 100 square feet and is 10 feet tall. It's hurricane resistant and can be converted to capture rainwater by adding roof paneling, gutter, and a downspout. Depending on the amount of space you have available, it could make for a beautiful garden centerpiece that can also be used to grow vertical plants or vines while providing some shade. These plans are available by request. Another piece of gardening infrastructure to consider is rain barrels for irrigation. On average, Cape Canaveral receives 53 inches of rainfall per year. So rainfall is quite plentiful, especially in the summer months during the rainy season. Adding rain barrels to your garden by placing them under downspouts and gutters can provide a sustainable and clean source of fresh water for irrigation. The larger your system, the better in terms of storage capacity and tap water offsets. According to the EPA, Rain barrels have the ability to save the average homeowner 1,300 gallons of water annually. Rain barrels also allow one to reduce their stormwater runoff, 
which can flow untreated into nearby water bodies like the Banana River Lagoon, by picking up pollutants and debris as it washes down streets and driveways during and after a rainstorm. One of the most common sizes of rain barrels is 55 gallons, but they can range anywhere from 30 to 1,000 gallons. As with garden beds, there are no shortage of ways to build a rain barrel system. A link on how to build a rain barrel system from UF IFAS is available in the video description below. Another great resource we'd like to provide you is the City of Cape Canaveral Urban Gardening, Urban Gardening Tips and Recommendations Packet. This packet was written in response to Florida's new bill, CS slash SB 82, Vegetable Gardens, which went into effect on July 1st, 2019. The bill prohibits, quote, a county, municipality, or other political subdivision of the state from regulating vegetable gardens on residential properties. Any local ordinance or regulation regarding vegetable gardens on residential properties is void and unenforceable. However, the bill does not preclude the adoption of local ordinance or regulations of general nature that do not specifically regulate vegetable gardens, including, but not limited to, regulations and ordinances relating to water use during drought conditions, fertilizer use, or control of invasive species." Unquote. The bill defines the term vegetable garden as a plot of ground where herbs, fruits, flowers, or vegetables are cultivated for human consumption. To help residents with their urban gardening adventures in response to this bill, and to ensure best practices, the city developed this packet that is available on our website. Here is a nice visual from the USDA showing the hardiness zones that can be found across the state of Florida. There are seven in total, although a lot of people just like to group these into three distinct sections, Northern Florida, Central Florida, and Southern Florida. You can see most of our area is grouped in the 9B and 10A zones. Here is a Central Florida planting calendar for your garden. Please feel free to pause the video now to see what you can grow in each month of the year. As we approach spring, you can start to grow carrots, corn, arugula, onions, peas, watermelon, okra, beans, and sweet potatoes. Now let's talk about Florida native plants and their importance to landscape design and gardening. According to the Florida Native Plant Society, for most purposes, the phrase Florida native plant refers to those species occurring within the state boundaries prior to European contact, according to the best available scientific and historical documentation. The city encourages the use of Florida native plants whenever possible, since they are best for the natural environment and have many benefits over non-native species. Since Florida native plants are indigenous to the state, these types of plants are well adapted, meaning they are usually hardier than non-native species. They are often drought, flood, and salt tolerant, cost less than non-native species, require less maintenance, and are often great with erosion control. There are dozens of native species to choose from, some of which are great for promoting pollinators such as bees and butterflies. A list of Florida native plants can be found in the video description below. Species of native plants the city uses quite often are dune sunflower, firebush, sand cord grass, mully grass, blanket flower, milkweed, sea oats, railroad vine, coontis, live oak, southern magnolias, and of course mangroves. One of the best examples we have of Florida native landscaping design in the city is Wagner Park on North Atlantic Avenue. Completed in late 2019, this is a stormwater pocket park that uses over 10 different Florida native species. Over 200 individual plants were planted during the park's construction. Species include dune sunflower, sand cord grass, firebush, mully grass, and Florida native milkweed. Each of these plants can reduce stormwater runoff from North Atlantic while preserving the state's natural environment. The park is designated, is designated a monarch butterfly way station for its use of monarch butterfly friendly plants and it is not uncommon to see this beautiful species of endangered butterfly traversing the park's greenery. Another recent example of Florida natives can be found along the shoreline of Banana River Park. In early February 2021, a line of 40 sand core grasses were planted along the park's lagoon front shoreline as a means of erosion control. 
extending northwards from the park's public dock. Native perennial grasses such as core grass develop extensive root systems that can serve to hold shorelines and embankments together, reducing erosion and the risk of collapse. This is why you often see these types of plants planted along highway embankments and in roadside swales, as they are also tolerant to periods of inundation, even in salt and brackish water. This particular area of the park is susceptible to erosion, as seen in the photo in the lower right corner of the slide, which shows the aftermath of 2016's Hurricane Matthew. This is an example of what is called green infrastructure, where natural solutions are used instead of gray infrastructure methods that involve concrete, steel, and other artificial means. The city will continue to use Florida native plants wherever appropriate to boost the community's environmental well being, biodiversity, and to lead by example. And now for the last slide. With that, we come to the end of this month's webisode. If you have any questions regarding what you've seen in this webisode, please feel free to email me via the email address shown here. Be sure to subscribe to the city's official YouTube channel and hit the bell so you can get notified for all the latest Sustainable Wet webisodes. In the next webisode, we will be discussing the topic of sea turtles in preparation for the 2021 sea turtle nesting season. I've been Zach. I hope you have enjoyed this content. Thank you for watching and have a great day.